You've been reading lately about the militarization of space and whether there are nukes in orbit around the Earth. You ever wonder what's up with that? Russia developing a space-based anti-satellite weapon to try to disable and destroy satellites in space. Congress has said perhaps that there's some scaremongering uh, going on here. The idea that it's nuclear powered, I'm not entirely mm. convinced that that's a, like a strategic move. So a few years ago, I co-authored a book with a longtime editor and friend, Avis Lang, this 600-page book titled Accessory to War, The Unspoken Alliance Between Astrophysics and the Military, which chronicled this two-way street between the fruits of research when we study the universe and the needs of the military for whatever their efforts or urges to conquest might have been throughout time. A lot of my interest in this topic came about because of tour of duty as a member of the Defense Innovation Board of the Pentagon, as well as a few commissions that I served under the George W. Bush White House. And I served the Pentagon under Barack Obama going into Donald Trump. So that was kind of a baptism for me as fundamentally an academic just to see how the sausage is made, how people think about national security and the like. What's come up recently is the question, are we now militarizing space? And this seemed to shock people when they learned of this because space, maybe they had the idea that it is or should be pristine, where everyone holds hands in space. And I had a little more of a cynical view of that. And that was, if you're gonna sign a treaty that everyone is peaceful in space, which, by the way, was the basis of the 1967 treaty for the peaceful uses of outer space. The title of that treaty is much longer than that, but that's the idea. I'm old enough and mature enough, I think, to reflect on how unrealistic that is for the following reason. If we can't get along on Earth's surface, why should the simple act of being in space change that? And if we can get along in space, as mandated by this treaty, then why can't we get along here on Earth? Let's call Earth space. How about that? Then there'd be peace everywhere, but there isn't. And so we have a space force. Uh, it came out under the Trump administration and a lot of Trump haters just don't, didn't like anything Trump did without realizing that of course, space force has been percolating for quite some time. And the space force is not a new idea. It already existed within the Air Force. It was the US Space Command. It already had a budget, it already had people working and solving problems related to space security. It was just pulled out and now it has its own identity. Space is a very different environment from the air. If at any time you said to yourself, it makes sense that we had an Air Force, then by the same reasoning, you would be led to the conclusion that it makes sense we would have a space force especially given assets we, the United States, have in space right now. Not only the value of the hardware, these are satellites that, that provide communications for us, weather satellites, other monitoring satellites that tell us not only the weather or the climate, but trends in the climate so that we can understand the future of climate change. There's not only that, space has been a place where a surveillance has been a major feature of what it is to go into space. People say we shouldn't militarize space. You realize we've had surveillance satellites ever since the dawn of the space age. It's the new high ground. That's how it has been used. To think somehow that's something new or different, no. It is what's always been happening in space. By the way, I'm not defending it. I'm just declaring that it's true, which I think we should all hold hands and sing kumbaya. But until that day arises, then the value of national security has very high significance to our place in this world. So what does that mean now? Well, you'd want a space force to protect your assets. And the assets are not just, like I said, the value of the hardware orbiting Earth in space, that costs money. There's the value of the commerce it enables. GPS satellites that now track, by the way, 
a military project, then turned into a commercial enterprise to serve commerce, that GPS, there would be no Uber or Lyft without GPS, right? These are now billion dollar operations in this world, okay? So the value of space is huge to us. So you would want a space force to protect not only our assets in space, but to make sure we always have access to space so that we will not be denied that access by any adversary. That's the primary role of the Space Force. So what does the treaty say from 1967? And there's a modified updated version of it that has come after that. But the treaty says no nukes in space, no weapons of mass destruction in space. Let's assume everyone abides by that treaty. It's still odd that we all agree to not have it in space, but we don't agree to not have it on Earth's surface where we all live. That's just weird to me, just as a rational scientist, that, oh, we're all friends up here, but not over here. You can't be friends everywhere. Whatever it takes to be friends in space, let's do that on Earth, okay? But if you can't do that, then what next steps do you take? A couple of things about space. Here, here's Earth. What we call space, I just, I'm, I'm an astrophysicist, so I get to say this. If here's Earth, if this were the actual size of Earth, do you know where Mars would be? It would be a mile away. You know where the moon would be? It would be in the next room 30 feet away. Do you know where the orbiting International Space Station is and where the Hubble telescope is? It's one centimeter above Earth's surface. That's what everybody is calling space. Now, let's say you manage to put weapons of mass destruction in space. It would be orbiting Earth one centimeter above the surface. And let's say you wanted to attack some country. You kind of have to wait until your orbit brings the weapon over your target. You'd have to like wait around for that. Okay, right, is it this orbit? Is it the next one? Because Earth is turning inside of your orbit. While you're orbiting Earth, Earth is also turning. So you're exposed to many different parts at many different times. If, is that your goal? Think about that because we can already destroy cities from Earth's surface. You know what they're called? Intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBM. I grew up with that stuff. I grew up in the Cold War. What is it? It's a missile in a silo that is a nuclear warhead. It launches, exits Earth's atmosphere, goes through the vacuum of space exactly towards its target, hits its target within 45 minutes between any two places on Earth. So to have something floating in, a, in an orbiting platform when it might not be where it needs to be is not even necessary if you're gonna conduct warfare. Just consider that. Also, maybe there's, you want a weapon to destroy another satellite that's in space. A satellite you judge may put you in harm's way on Earth. Well, where's your satellite that's gonna do that? Is it near the other satellite? Probably not. You'd have to wait until the orbits might intersect. How long is that? Each orbit is 90 minutes. Is it 100 orbits from now? 1,000 orbits? Is it a year? You're gonna have to wait around for that to happen because your trajectory in orbit around the Earth is predetermined. Instead, just do what Russia, China, India, and the United States has already done. Launch a kinetic missile from Earth's surface up into the orbital path of the satellite and destroy it that way. Well, that'll happen. You can do that within six minutes at most eight minutes, intersect a satellite that you want to destroy. All of these countries I listed, the United States included, that destroyed a satellite in that very way, we destroyed our own satellites. India destroyed one of its own, Russia its own, China, and so did we. It's a demonstration of power, for sure. It looks like all we needed to take out this, the satellite was wandering, so we, and, but everybody notices you have the power to take out a satellite. You can do that from Earth in eight minutes and target the satellite at a moment's notice, but otherwise you're just in orbit, waiting around till you happen to be near another satellite. My point is, weapons in space are much less useful, militaristically, strategically, tactically, than what we already have built to harm one another from Earth's surface. So, these are just orbital facts to fold into any deliberations and conversations that anybody's gonna have about the weaponization of space. There's also a talk about a electromagnetic pulse. You may have heard about this. An electromagnetic pulse, uh, you can look it up, you can Google it, but it's shown in a few movies. One of them was um, Ocean's Eleven 
had an electromagnetic pulse. You know what it is? It's a very intense pulse of electromagnetic energy, and it basically fries electrical circuits. They did it in Ocean's Eleven to cut the electricity of all of Las Vegas so that they can execute their heist with the money from the hotel. If there's an electromagnetic pulse, it basically takes out all electronic circuitry within a given radius. Well, if you put a pulse of that in orbit, remember you are only a centimeter above Earth's surface on the scale of this globe. A pulse, there's a limit to how far that pulse can reach. It'll go to its own horizon, so it might be a couple of thousand miles across. It's not reaching satellites on the other side. There are thousands of satellites orbiting Earth at any given time, and that number's only going up. Yeah, you could take out a bunch of them here, but one of them might be your satellite. Plus, if you're gonna destroy a satellite with a kinetic kill, by the way, it's called a kinetic kill because you don't need warheads, you don't need explosives. The satellite is going so fast to begin with, 18,000 miles an hour, all you have to do is hit it just, or get in its way. You get in its way, it hits you, the thing explodes, basically, without any explosives at all. It's just the kinetic energy to make that happen. Now, if you do that too high up, the pieces will always stay in orbit and they become debris. You know what that's like? That's like peeing in your own toilet. It's debris that'll then affect your other satellites. So it's not strategic to destroy somebody else's satellite with a kinetic kill and still expect to do business in space. It just doesn't really work functionally. There was talk that if we have the power to move an asteroid out of harm's way, the NASA mission DART, Double Asteroid Redirect Test, look it up. It was a successful effort to change the orbit of an asteroid that may one day hit us. It was a test case. Because if we're good at it, then we can just move them all out of the way so we never get hit and we'll never have the fate of the dinosaurs. Because you know if they had NASA, they, they'd still be here. Well, they need opposable thumbs too and maybe a slightly bigger brain. But other than that, if they could, you know if they could deflect an asteroid, they would have. So now they're extinct and we're not, for now. So, there was an argument, Carl Sagan even posed this argument, if you have the power to deflect an asteroid out of harm way, you might have the power to aim it towards your enemy on Earth. And once again, the histrionics of that, it's you gotta wait for an asteroid to exist, to be headed towards Earth, and then it would otherwise hit the ocean, but now you want it to hit some landmass that is occupied by your enemy, and you want to direct, an ICBM will already do that. So. This Star Wars thinking that goes on as portrayed in film doesn't have the practicality of weapons already developed, deployable here on Earth's surface. I'm just telling you this. So, what's our future? The space, ideal place for spy satellites. And we've been doing that for 65 years, ever since we've been putting anything into orbit at all. That's still militaristic. It's not weapons, but Access to information is fundamental to the conducting of any kind of war that people have. We've got spy satellites, we've got communication satellites, weather satellites, it's a crowded space. In fact, I think that's why we haven't really been visited by aliens. They looked at all the crap that we have orbiting the Earth, not only the satellites that work, all the debris that doesn't, and they say, whoa! <laughs> They think their orbital space is a trash bin, and they just went on to another planet to visit them. Anyhow, just a little bit of uh, space physics and national security rolled up into one. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always, keep looking up.